Let's calibrate the Sekonic L858D. It's a beast. For your mission, you'll need some kind of image capturing device like a digital or a pinhole camera. You'll need a color checker passport or a similar target card. And you'll need a light source, which can be either sunlight, continuous studio light, or flash. You'll need a pen and paper or an iPad, laptop or a tablet to record your readings. I'll put a copy of my template below. And if you want to use that, feel free. You'll need the DTS software. Today I'll be creating a profile for flash, but the process is the same for continuous lighting or daylight. If you're going to use daylight, best to have a cloudless sunny day and use morning around 9 to 10 a.m. or 3 to 4 p.m. summertime, as this gives you a good angle on your card without shadows and plenty of time to do it. Here's the setup I used for continuous uh, lighting with the newer 660 RGBs. For this profile, I'm using two Godox VS1s and a Godox AD600 Pro, my Sony A1, my Sony 20mm f1.8 G lens, two pocket wizards, a sturdy tripod, preferably weighted down. I'll leave all the equipment list below in the description. Because I'll be creating a profile with the advanced and extended mode, I'm going to use bracketing. And I'm going to take five shots. Or you can do the manual method and start with a middle shot and then take two shots either side. For this, you'll need a lens that has a, step range, a stop range from f1.8 to f22. If not, you'll need to shoot for normal mode. And so you'll only need to shoot the middle and one shot either side. As you'll see from my setup, I had to get an insanely close to the target with a lens that uh, was wide and you'll need to fill at least 50% of the screen, which is why I had to get so close. And the only lens I had for that was my Sony 20 millimeter. So you may want to consider just going with normal mode and using uh, a longer lens. Uh, that way, uh, things may be simpler. I'll put the f-stop settings below so that you can set those manually if you need to. Let's go ahead and set up the light meter ready to create your profiles. Setting up the uh, button for the switching between instant and spot metering. You can either do that through the menu with the wrench on the right hand side. Or you can go to menu, custom settings, and then function button two, and then choose incident spot selection. Once you've done that on your screen, you should then have the middle function button as a toggle between instant and spot metering. Next, we're going to set up your source for the light setting. If you're using daylight, then you obviously want just the wheel, but we're going to be using radio flash. So you want to choose the uh, blue lightning bolt with the radio button. Next, you want to set up your step or stop uh, increments. So to do that, you go to the menu button and then you go to custom settings. Once in that menu, you're going to choose increments of T plus F and then choose one step instead of thirds or halves. Once you've done that, you can go back to the main screen. The final setting is to make sure that you're using the correct profile. So to do this, you go to the wrench on the screen, choose set exposure profile and then choose default profile and not any other profiles that you may have stored on the Sekonic. Once you've done that, you are ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is set up the flashlights so that they all flash as one with a uniform light. In order to do that, we're going to set up the individual lights. So the beauty of the Sekonic L858D 
is its ability to control single lights and to fire all at the same time as well. Make sure that you're using incident and not reflective on your toggle. So what we're going to do is set up one light on the left, my A light. So we're going to get that to around about 5.6 and get that to 5.6. You can see that we can change the power settings in order to, to get that correct. So just play around with that until you get the right power setting to around about 5.6. It doesn't have to be bang on, but around 5.6 and 1 tenth or 2 tenths will be fine. Then we're going to repeat that process for the C light and take measurements to get that to around 5.6, make adjustments on the power settings. And then we're going to do the same with the key light and get that to around 5.6 as well. Once you've done that, you're going to change to all. So press the all button so that all flashes are firing together. And then we're going to take our first reading. So let's do that. Take our first reading, make our power adjustments so that we get from whatever reading we have to 5.6 dead, if possible. But if you can't, then 5, 6 and 1 tenth will be fine. And then we're going to take our reflective reading. So remember, we're going to use the fourth swatch from the left or third from the right as your grey card setting. So again, we do the same uh, measurement, but this time we don't do any adjusting. We just take the reading, which is the same reading as the instant reading, and we use that as the, uh, as the reading we put into our notes. So don't make any power adjustments, just use that reading that you get. Make sure you, I would take two or three readings so that we get um, the right one. Make a note of these readings on your notepad or your iPad, and then go ahead and take your five bracketed shots. Then repeat this process for ISOs 200, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. Once you've done that, it's time to get ready. Let's go over and create our profile. Next, I like to import all the images into Lightroom to crop out the unnecessary part of the image. Once they're imported, go to Develop, select the first image, and crop the image so that you only have the bottom target. Next, on the bottom row, select all the images, go to Sync, uncheck All, and then only tick the Crop checkbox. Apply the crop to all the images. Once this is done, we're ready to export. With all the images still highlighted, right-click, choose Export. The key thing to remember here is not to make any changes to the image. You all have your preference on where you want to store your images, so just go through the process and store in your preferred folder. Now you're ready to create your profile. Launch the DTS software from Sekonic, which you can download from their website if you don't have it already. It's free. You'll be presented with this dialog box, which is true of the time of this recording. We're going to create a new profile, and we're going to go to the Advanced Mode right here. On the next screen, choose Extended Mode. If you elected to shoot three bracketed shots, choose the normal mode, which is the same process but just has three images. Choose the x right color checker, unless you used one of the other targets, then obviously select that. Click Next. Select Flash and click Next. Here you will enter the readings you recorded earlier. Make sure that you are on ISO 100. Here's my list. I like to put at the top how and when I shot it and with what. OK, now we're ready. Let's put in the data. F5.6 dead on the ambient with a spot or reflected reading of F4 and 4 tenths. 
Click Next. It will ask you to select the folder that the images are stored in. Once selected, all your images will load. Select the first five images by putting a little checkbox, a little tick in the checkbox in the top right hand corner. Sometimes it's a bit faint to see. Click Next and it will just have the five images you selected. Next, click on one of the images. I like to choose a light image as it's easier to see and place the cursors. Drag each cursor so that it sits on the corner markers. It can be a little bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. Once the cursors are aligned, click all the images, making sure there is a green check mark on each image, then click Next. This will show you the profile for the ISO 100. Next, we're going to add another light source, so click on that button in the bottom left hand corner. Choose Flash again. Make sure you have chosen ISO 200 and then repeat this process right through to the 3200. Remember, when selecting the next batch of targets, it's the next five. So targets 6 to 10, then 11 to 15 and so on. Once you've completed these steps, on the final profile, click Save. Choose a name for your profile. In my case, I have already created a daylight profile, so I will just rename that with Flex at the front for Flash Extended Mode. Click OK. The next stage is to now edit this profile to give you the maximum dynamic range on your readings when you use the meter. Select the profile again and click Edit Profile then change exposure range. At the top left, select your profile, then select ISO 100 first. Using your mouse, click and drag the red bar for dynamic range as far left as you feel comfortable with at the bottom of the graph. Next, select the green bar and drag it close to it. This, is your, this will represent your clipping point when you take readings. Next, choose ISO 200 and again repeat the process through to ISO 3200. Once complete and on the last edit, click the back button bottom left. You'll be presented with two options, save as or overwrite. I normally choose overwrite as I feel confident in my edit. Next, we're going to transfer this profile to the light meter. Connect your Sekonic to your computer and switch on and you should see connection and then the right hand box is populate. From the left box select your profile that you wish to transfer. In the select profile box choose a destination line and then click the arrows to bring it across. Next choose transfer to light meter. Say OK to overwrite profile data in the light meter and the profile will transfer across. You're now ready to test drive your shiny new profile. Go forth and expose. I will follow up with real world examples of how I'm using this profile. So stay tuned and subscribe. Thank you for listening.